I bought the three best robotic lawnmowers under $1,000 and put them head to head to head to see which one came out on top. What's up guys, my name is Tyler and welcome to another edition of The Lawn Review. Like I said, today we're taking a look at the three best robotic lawnmowers under $1,000 because, you know, the robot overlords are obviously taking over our lives, but they have to take all our money too. Let's find out. So the three robotic lawnmowers that I'm looking at today are the Works Landroid S20V. It's got a two amp hour battery. And then the Gardena Sileno Minimo. And then finally the Husqvarna Automower 115H. These are the best in the game, but let's find out which one's the best in the game. So unboxing and setting up these three robotic lawnmowers was basically like Groundhog Day. I mean, it was the same thing over and over and over again. They all come with a boundary wire. They all came with stakes to stake in that boundary wire. The only difference was the works didn't require you to add a guide wire, which basically told the mower how to get back to the charger. It just used part of the boundary wire as the guard wire, which was kind of nice. It wasn't, it was just one less step in the process, but basically they all came basically packaged the exact same way they all had user manuals quick start guides all of them directed you to an app that helped you set it up so really intuitive I mean and honestly I thought it was gonna take me a whole lot longer than I actually did to set these up I actually got them all done in basically one day so I ch elected not to dig them into the ground just because eventually they'll work their way into the soil and you know it won't be a problem just keep in mind when you weed eat and things like that or edge around those areas that you put a boundary wire there but all in all it was super easy to set all these up i give the nod to works here a little bit just because with the Husqvarna and the Gardena that i had to cut in a return wire into the part of the boundary wire or return wire i mean actually like a, a guide wire that tells it you know how to get back like i said the Husqvarna and Gardena are manufactured by the same company Husqvarna the actually the charger for the Gardena that says Husqvarna on it. So it's basically, it was the exact same setup between the Gardena and Husqvarna. All right guys, so before we get into the specifics and start differentiating some of these robotic lawnmowers, like who does what better than who and all that stuff, let's talk about what they do the same because for the vast majority of how these mowers operate and really all the mowers in this industry, they basically operate exactly the same. They're basically like giant Roombas with like razor blades attached to the bottom of them on a, like a little spinny disc. So basically they'll mow just how a Roomba vacuum, just like a randomized pattern in a predetermined area. Some of them require you to lay boundary wires with a wire that's very similar to like an electric fence wire, or some of them rely on like GPS satellites to determine the boundary that it will mow within. But basically they all do that. It's kind of just like this random little like pattern that they do basically every single day they'll be mowing, you know, depending on how big your lawn is, they could be mowing every single day. So, you know, for me and my OCD brain, I'm, I'm sitting there watching it like, you know, it's driving me insane because it's just like random and it'll pass spots like this, like right here, like, yeah, it passes that like that because it's, you know, eventually it's gonna cut it completely and there's like math behind it that makes it all make sense. Like eventually it will cut it throughout the week, but as the week goes on, there's parts of it that are gonna be left uncut. And for me and my OCD brain, it's like really highlighted the fact that I struggle with you know, things not being completely done because that's essentially how these mowers operate. They don't do the full job. They don't do the full mow all at once. They kind of do it in progress throughout the week. So that's kind of how they operate. And each one of these mowers too, allows you to control everything you need to control the mower with on top of the mower itself. Like the Husqvarna right there, and then the Gardena is decent a little bit, not quite as sophisticated as the Husqvarna, but you can get away with not downloading an app. You could just put check and it'll start running. And as long as you have that boundary wire set and you you know have drawn your perimeter around any bushes or any landscaping beds that you don't want cut, uh, you should be good to go. You don't really need anything beyond just the mower and the boundary wire. So yeah, that's just a high level overview of exactly how these robotic lawnmowers work. 
random and basically breaks your brain if you're OCD. The first electric robotic lawnmower that we're looking at is the Works Landroid S 20 volt. So it's powered by that 20 volt electric battery. The charging time took about 60 minutes for it to fully charge. It is rated to mow about one eighth of an acre or 5,400 square feet. So you can go to measuremylawn.com, type in your address, zoom in, draw a border around your house or your yard to see if this is like the right size for you or any of these electric robotic lawnmowers are the right size for you. But basically that's the max that is rated to cut. And then the height adjustment goes all the way down from 1.5 inches up to three inches. So you have about an inch and a half of play and you adjust that with the knob on top of the mower. So you just twist that knob depending on how high you want your grass to be cut. And then the slope that it's rated to cut at is about 20%. And this is gonna be the lowest out of the three. So it doesn't handle slopes super well, then it cuts at a width of eight inches and it's gonna run you about $884 or $885, depending on where you get it. And next up is this Gardena Sileno Minimo. The actual model is 15202-41. Funny enough, it's actually manufactured by Husqvarna, which is another mower in this comparison. So super similar setup. It takes about 60 to 75 minutes to fully charge. Cuts for about 65 minutes before it needs to return back to the dock and charge. This one also is rated to cut about an eighth of an acre, just like the works. So they can cut a similarly sized lawn, but this one, the height on this one is, is very different. It cuts at the lowest setting of 0 0.8 inches all the way up to two inches. So that's really low, probably more applicable to the warm season guys some of you that like to cut your you know saint augustine really low or your bermudas really really low like that it does handle a slope pretty well it's 25 percent versus the 20 percent that was on the landroid very very small mower though it only cuts 6.2 inches like that's the cutting pass and that's a whole two inches less than the work so it takes a good while longer to cut that same size lawn that the works cuts this one's going to run you 729 dollars so 120 dollars less than that work mower. And the third and final robotic lawnmower that we're putting head to head is the Husqvarna Automower 115H. This is kind of like the OG of the robotic lawnmower space. Husqvarna has been doing this for a while. So I was really excited to put this one to the test, but this one takes about 60 minutes too to fully charge, but it's actually rated to cut 0.4 acres. So this is gonna cover the highest acreage of all three robotic lawnmowers and it cuts pretty quick. It moves pretty quick. But the height adjustment settings on this one go from two inches all the way up to 3.6, which is a whole lot better if you use like Kentucky bluegrass or a fescue. I really like these height adjustment settings. And so I think this would be really appropriate for warm or cool season grasses. And then also with this one, it cuts a 30% slope. So that's again, gonna be the steepest out of all three slopes and the widest cutting width at nine inches. And this one's actually only gonna run you about 700 bucks, which is nice. Man, honestly, I've been standing out here watching this Husqvarna auto mower mow for like, no joke, like an hour. This thing is so much fun to watch. Borderline frustrating, like I said, really struggling with the OCD stuff, because I mean, look at the pattern, good grief. But it's really, really fun to watch. These things are actually pretty neat. All right, guys, so after using these mowers for a couple weeks, I'm gonna rank them for you. Number three is obviously the Gardena. It was basically unusable in my turf. If you have a warm season grass like a Bermuda or rye that you're trying to cut really, really low, you might be able to get away with that Gardena, but it's really slow and honestly really buggy. In some previous videos, I've dealt with issues like this too, where I could tell there was an issue with the mower. And so I kind of gave it, you know, maybe a little bit of unfair advantage because I gave it another shot. And I'm kind of changing my philosophy on that. If I get something and it just doesn't work, that's exactly what I'm gonna tell you. And that's what happened with this Gardena, it just didn't work. They were trying to get me to do like a factory reset on the mower and all this stuff. Plug it into my USB drive on my phone, or not phone, but computer, and see if I can restart the firmware. And I'm like, no, that's just not how it goes. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So that's number three, easily. And then just also the, like the design on it, it was not great. Like. The other ones at least had a screen. This one, you know, you just got a couple buttons. Like, I don't even know what that does. Like, there's no screen that tells what the timer button does on the Gardena. And I couldn't get it paired with the app. It was just littered with issues, honestly. So that's number three. Number two, I'm actually gonna go with the works. I really like overall like rugged design look of it. The wheels looked intense. It looked like, you know, it was getting ready to get the job done. But the fact that it only cuts up to a height 
of three inches. For me, I've got tall fescue. Again, you know, some of you warm season guys, you might be able to get away with it, but it just seemed like it really struggled getting out of spots. Like I use these mows for about two weeks and had them running basically constantly in the works though it like actually it made it through my lawn it just felt like there was a quite a few times i had to go out there and kind of help it along or pick it up and move it to a different spot ultimately like it ended up i guess cutting my lawn but not like unassisted and you know speak of the devil it's right up here kind of basically stalled out up there uh, it's kind of moving but it just seems like overall like the power is not there i will say a pro with the works though was that it did have that app where you could control a little bit more of the schedule with that and there's a party mode on the app too which is kind of funny it kind of does this little dance but overall you know the the fact that you could schedule it on the app wasn't enough in my opinion honestly the whole robotic like mower thing is supposed to alleviate me having to go out there and fix my mower it should just do it automatically well that one really didn't do it. So that leaves us with the works, honestly. Uh, it looks like a spaceship from Mars. Like it's pretty goofy looking in my opinion, but it works. Whatever logic they have in the mower to like get it to get unstuck really, really worked. I felt like I didn't have to go out here and, and adjust it really at all. And as you can tell, I've put in an irrigation sprinkler system and haven't done like an amazing job of refilling holes yet. Just life's been busy, but Honestly, the Husqvarna got out of the situation. I would have loved the ability to use the app to kind of tweak the schedule because I felt like it was honestly cutting a little bit fast. Like I didn't need it to cut as often as it was. I guess it doesn't hurt anything if it is, but you know, I couldn't do the tweaks on the app on an app because with that 115H model, you just don't have the access to the app. If you do the 115, you do have access to the app. It's like a couple hundred, maybe a hundred more dollars or maybe even less than that. But honestly, if you're trying to get like budget, budget, you know, like bottom tier, like let's just make it work. This Husqvarna, I never had any issues with it. It just kept coming out here and cutting and cutting and cutting. And I really liked that it cut to three and a half inches. For me, I'm still trying to cut to four inches, but three and a half is kind of enough for me. It's actually 3.6 inches. And then it's got that nine inch cutting deck and it just moves real quick, especially compared to that works. That might have something to do with the grass height, but they should all be down cut, have cut, because I know that they've all fully cut my lawn at least once. The works is on the front yard, Husqvarna's on the back. So they should be working, you know, basically with the same amount of resistance, but the Husqvarna just seems to be moving a lot quicker. So I can cut more within the works. It's actually rated for that almost half an acre basically. So you can really get a good bit cut with this. You do have to control all the settings on the mower itself in terms of like spot cuts and scheduling and all that has to be done on the screen on top of the mower itself. But you know, once you get it set up once or maybe you gotta go back and tweak it again, maybe once or twice. But after that, it's pretty hands off, pretty laissez faire. So that's one, two, three for me. Oh, and by the way, it's also the cheapest. So it's gonna run you about 700 bucks. So you save 140 bucks or something compared to the works and you don't even have to go outside. So it's a win-win for me. So the price for me is just icing on the cake with this Husqvarna. Man, that's fun to watch though. These things are cool. I'm really curious to see what the couple next couple of years will look like with these things. I think they're gonna get pretty advanced, pretty cool looking. So let me know in the comment section, would you guys uh, use a robotic mower? And for me, I'm not the demographic for a robotic lawnmower. I love getting out and cutting my grass and doing it myself and releasing maybe some toxins in my body, you know, some obviously have a three month old, so anxiety, you know, levels are pretty, pretty high. So being able to get out there and sweat some of those toxins out, so those anxiety toxins is, I think beneficial for me. So I'm never gonna use a, a robotic lawnmower long-term, but they're cool to watch. I had a blast making this video. So if you have any questions, you want a little bit more info on any of these mowers, just throw the questions in the comment section. I will be sure to answer them as soon as possible. Guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this video, I reviewed the top five electric lawnmowers. Had an absolute blast making that video. I think you'd have fun watching it too. So click right here if you wanna check out that video. Until next time, keep cutting, peace.